Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to be doing a fun build project today and a huge shout out to Stafford's EDC for sending me out a set of AIM front aluminum scales in this beautiful swoosh pattern to check out. Now he bought these for his knife and he's like, man, Zach is a man of bug outs and scales. Let's send a set out to him just so he can check them out, probably before I even put them on his own knife. So thank you very much. Also a huge shout out to Journey Tool Company. Made this sweet billet, little tool drive holder for all your bits. I put out the two bits I'm gonna need today, a T6 and a T8. So we'll put this right up here. We'll be getting into that. Now, let's get set up. We'll be right back. Okay, so a little bit about these scales. We have Billet 6061 T6 aluminum in a sniper gray Cerakote. And you can see the milling is just fantastic. It's gonna allow you to have a little bit of grip. These are for a Benchmade bug out. One of their goals was to use the aluminum to keep that lightweight factor that we know and love about the bug out. So, this one has the lanyard delete. They do make them with lanyard holes. They make them with other patterns. They make them flat with no milling on them. The next run is coming out soon. So definitely go over to aimfront.com. I'll put a link down below. Get signed up so you know when they're going on. Now these are pretty cool because it's you know made and designed here in the US by a family of firefighters and 10% of all their sales go to the Fallen Firefighter Fund, which is pretty cool. So it really supports some really cool people that are out there. One of the things I wanted to do, I wanna weigh these up prior to installing them. So let's get a weight of just both scales by themselves, just a hair over an ounce, literally a hair over one ounce. So that's pretty cool to see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna get a weight on this. We're gonna use the Benchmade Bug Out 535 BK-2, which is their blacked out version. Let's weigh this one. Ooh man, that's pretty stiff. I, it's brand new out of the box, I gotta use that one. So 1.78, 1.78 out of the box. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Let's do a little tear down, and I'll probably end up speeding this up, but who knows, because some people like to see how to tear this apart. So we're gonna get my little stubby Weehaw driver. I'm gonna use a T6. We're gonna take out all the hardware in these fashions, the pocket clip, the hardware over here, uh, and then we'll do our pivot last with a T10. So we, can, we need to have some fun music to go in the background to do this. And one of the things I like to do if I'm putting these on my knife is when I put it back together, I'll use a little bit of the blue Loctite to build them back together just for the fact that it'll stay together. You won't have any of these small screws pop out or come loose on you from all the use. So pretty cool overall. I really like what they're doing. Um, I had heard of the aim front. <clears throat> I've never used them. So when Stafford's EDC sent me a thing out and said, hey, you know, I got these and I think you'll love them. Uh, do you want to try them out? And I'm like, man, I'd love to try them out. So gracious enough to send them my way. So thank you so much because everybody gets to see kind of what it is. And I like the milling. I'm going to compare them to some other Benchmades I have once I get this built and put together. Wish me, wish me luck when it comes to the pivot. That's the only part that has a little bit of struggle, but we'll, we'll hope that since it's a brand new build, it'll go together smoothly. One of the only things that I run into is when you put them on hard scales like this, you don't get that flex like you do in the FRN scales here. These are the CF Elite ones, of course, on the bug out right now. 1.78 was our starting. So pocket clips are gonna be longer than the body screws. So just remember that when you're taking it apart, they're about twice the length, just so they can go through everything. 
You see those right there. We'll put that off to the side over here. Maybe we'll put the other pocket clip screw with it just to keep them safe and secure. Take off that final body screw. We will be utilizing all the original hardware and the original backspacers for this build. So that's kind of a cool thing. So now the only thing holding it together is gonna to be that pivot. So we'll take our T6 out. We'll put that safely back into our Journey Tools. And again, shout out to Journey Tool Company, an awesome Oregon company um, that's just so awesome, man. Um, got one of their small EDC trays and they make the bigger EDC trays about the size of this mat here. And just beautiful work that he does. And he's doing some drivers too and I missed out on the driver drop. So I know there's some of you guys, he had some uh, kind of you know, custom ones that he made just testing out. And I know you guys picked them up super fast. So hopefully you guys pick those up. Those are kind of cool. So we'll take our top scale off. None of the barrel spacers came with it. So we'll set those off to the side. We'll put our one barrel spacer up there. Well, the other one came out real easily, which is nice. And now you're left with your blade, your, your liners there, and then your pivot screws holding it in on this side. So we'll gently pop this out. We have to pull the access bar back a little bit to get the tension off. It should pop right out. There we go. Now the, the key is if you can keep this all together in one piece, that's gonna be easiest for everybody when you put it back together. So we'll just set that down gently there. You can take it all apart. It's pretty easy to put back together. Have some other videos on that. This is a D-shaped pivot. So you do have the one flat spot at the top up there. And so that's important to note on your liners when you put it back together. The flat D part, it's probably hard to see right here, is actually facing down towards the axis. So when we put it back together, we'll make sure we'll put it in that direction. Let's build this back. And one of the things I like to do is I like to just kind of put this back together kind of in the fashion it came apart. So let's use this scale right here. We'll put that and we'll line it up right there. And if I can, I'm gonna use this T10 bit and I'm just gonna use that as my placeholder. So that's gonna run through as you can see and kind of hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put in the body screw here that holds the top of the liner and the body screw there that holds the middle of the liner. And we'll put those in just finger tight using the T6 without the driver, just so it locks in and gets it held in place. And please definitely let me know if you found any other tricks or tips that worked for you in the comments below. But this is what's worked out well for me. So now those are in, we still have our T10 holding everything together. Now what I'd like to do is um, we're gonna go, we're gonna move the blades under a little bit of tension. So you gotta be careful on that. Um, shout out to my buddy Big Red and EDC Specialties um, for featuring new products from, uh, I think it's the Finger Cut Kit. And I'm hoping I'm not gonna need one today putting this together. But they offer a, a super product that I think we all need to have in our kits. We all need to have with us if we're, uh, we have knives around us. So look forward to that uh, from Big Red. I may buy some myself just to feature and to uh, put on here, but definitely a super product. So we'll go with the second barrel spacer and we'll put that on now as well. And these do have flat spots as well. Hopefully you can see. And they, they you know, mill the, the scales the same with the flat spots so they don't spin. So that way you can easily just put these back together. Some of the original ones from other companies had done them. Oh, we almost lost it, hold on. We're knocking everything over. Hopefully you guys are okay. I'm okay, we're all good, no cuts. No hits, no runs, no errors. Okay. We're trying to do this one shot, but this one's being a little bit of a pain because I'm having to hold the T10 in with my palm while this is upside down but it makes it easy because you can get all your hardware in and then lock in your top scale now. So now I've got my barrel spacers both secured on this side, the hardware secured on this side, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently pull this out and I'm going to put it in from the bottom. And so now it's coming up, coming up through that side, holding everything together. You can see your washers in there. Everything's still good to go. And now we can build the top side of the scale and put that together. Kind of holds everything in place. And you can see it's going to look just amazing with the black hardware and kind of that uh, black blade is just beautiful looking already. So I'm excited for this one. I'm going to leave these a little loose. I'm just going to barely tighten them because that's going to help us when we go to put the pivot back in. So just enough so they start to grab because if the pivot's off a little bit, it's not going to it's not going to line up appropriately and so you need to adjust those. So I like to leave them a little bit loose. Get those dialed in. Thanks for bearing with me on a little bit longer of a video. And the clip's going to go on this side, but obviously it's going to cover this that is this screw that's loose, so we're going to not put the clip on yet. But your flat spot, your flat side of the pivot, which is this one, is going to go against your pocket here. So we're going to pull the access back a little bit. We're going to put this in from the other side again now. And remember that flat spot on the pivot, we need to locate that, which is there. And we're going to put that towards the axis in hopes that it all just goes right back together real smooth. One take. So we got one, we got it through the scale and into the first part of the liner. <clears throat> now I'll flip this over and I'm going to use that T10 while keeping my finger on the bottom of the pivot. Use my thumb, pull back the axis a little bit and just kind of get it pushed in through on the bottom side. Now this is where if your liners are a little bit off, it's going to make it a little more difficult to get it in. So give me just one second here. There we go. And then now it's basically moved itself up to here, just on the other side of the inside washer, as you can see. So we'll move that inside washer just a little tiny bit. And it should just pop right in. That's the goal, right? We're almost there. <laughs> so we got just one little piece that needs to flex. Hopefully we'll get that in. We may have to take out the screws up here. We'll see if we can get them though. I'm still waiting for that, that tool company to come out with a, a D, a D, there we go. We got it all the way in. So now it's flat and it's flush. And now we can put our pivot screw back in up here. Went pretty well back together. And we're just gonna hand tighten this down and we're gonna make sure, I'm gonna tighten it all the way I can with my finger without the driver. And just make sure my centering's good, which centering looks pretty solid on this. So now we're gonna put the T6 in the driver and we're just gonna go around and tighten these up so they're nice and firm. Remember not to over tighten them. They will strip out potentially. That is why the Loctite is so important. We'll do this side. We'll put our clip on and we'll give this thing a little adjustment on the pivot. So it's dropping like it's hot. So pocket clip will go here for me, right-handed carry, tip up. We'll put the one screw in. I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose so I have a little bit of play. So I can get that other screw in. What do you guys think of these aim front scales? They're pretty awesome. I was surprised. I'm, you know, aluminum kind of goes, eh, I'm not sure on aluminum because I have some good titanium ones, some good carbon fiber. So we'll tighten that down. There we go. Now let's put the T6 back in our journey tool holder there, our bit holder, and let's go to our pivot. Let's loosen it up a little bit. Let's see if it's too loose. Oof, a little drop shutty. I like that. 
Woo. Might tighten it up just a hair. That might be too tight, let's see. And one of the other things I like to do, especially when I'm rebuilding these, is I'll put some Loctite when I put that pivot back together, just and then I'll let it sit because then that way it'll it'll kind of lock in like this is going to be the perfect tension for me. Let's get this out of the way. Let's put it in the tool holder where it's supposed to be. That way it gets it out of the way, it keeps us safe. Look at that. Now, we got to do it some justice. We got to get that oil off the blade so we have a beautiful look at it. But overall, I think Aim Front did awesome at this. And I think this is a perfect combo for this one. What do you guys think? Holy cow. As my, my friend, my buddy Big Red says, holy smokes. This definitely deserves a holy smokes times 10. But yeah, it feels really good with this grip too. Oof. Look at that. Just drop shut. Just a solid knife. There's going to be no flex at all. Aluminum scales, they center up perfect. So that speaks to just the quality they're putting out there. Their scales are totally even. Now let's look at a couple other ones that I have that you guys have seen before, just in comparison. But before we do that, I want to get you to that weight. So we we're at 1.78 ounces with the CF Elite scales. And this one fully built is gonna be 2.3, 2.36. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Keeps it lightweight, keeps it under two and a half ounces. This one's, man. I Now, I went to aimfront.com, I already signed up. I sent a, a, a message to them as well and just said, hey, you know, let me know when your next drop's gonna be, because I saw they were building a whole bunch in the last couple weeks. Um, and they do some amazing colors as well. But this swoosh pattern for me is where it's at. So you'll probably see me getting a set of those when they become available. Now these are the titanium ones that Bashy Design makes. They're gonna be a little heavier, but you can see the difference in patterns to them. Also built on another BK version of the bug out. Now, the original ones that I had got were the titanium critter scales. This is on a GRY, so it's on a gray blade, which might even look really good too with that gray. If you don't like the contrast with the black, you can go with the gray blade, but man, and this one's a lot heavier because you got the titanium backspacer as well. And that's a gorgeous build, but man, I gotta go, I gotta gotta give the props to aim front on these. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for hanging out, watching this one. I know it's a little bit longer, but again, thanks to Stafford's EDC for sending these out to me. These are awesome. These are the aim front scales and the swoosh pattern. They only run $59.25, so 60 bucks and you can get a set of these scales. So it's it's gonna be some of the cheapest aftermarket scales you can get besides going with like Flytanium G10 ones. But overall, it's gonna be one that you can drop <laughs> and keep on rolling with it. So anyways, you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out on the build with me. Do something kind for someone, but most importantly, take care.